An independent election observer, uh, observer group, Yaga Africa, has predicted that poor turnout of voters will pose a major threat to the success of the November 6 governorship elections in Anambra State. The observer group said, that, uh, said this at a one-day meeting with newsmen in Oka as part of its pre-election monitoring activities in the state. Ezenwa Nwagu, one of Yaga's board members, had said there was no visible sign uh, that suggests that insecurity would hamper the exercise. According to him, the major challenge is to get a number of electorates to come out and cast their votes. He urged residents of the state who had attained voting age to endeavor to register and ensure that they cast their votes on election day. Also talk about this voter apathy that is in the radar. Joining us to discuss this is uh, Paul James. He's the program manager, uh, elections, Yaga Africa. Thank you very much, Mr. Paul, for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Interesting. Um, voter apathy is not something that's um, alien to us anymore because we saw this uh, in the... Uh, 2019 election, presidential elections, we saw it, um, there was a low turnout. And, and if, for those, if you follow elections, you follow the local government elections here in Lagos State, you saw almost, I mean, no turnout, you know, for the local government elections. Um, and and I'm, 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 I'm sure that this is also the worry of Yaga uh, in, you know, Anambra State. So kindly walk us through why you have, what you have noticed that has made you worry that much. So um, this is uh, coming from the fact that we have observed almost every major elections in the country since 2007. Um, the Lagos you mentioned, for instance, Yaga was also in Lagos. I was in Lagos. And I can tell you, election day in Lagos was more like a public holiday for some of the voters. It is sad that whilst a lot of investment has been made in our elections, the quality of participation has increasingly become poor. 84 million Nigerians registered in, 20, uh, in 2019, according to INX uh, register of voters, 72 million collected their PVCs, but only 34% participated in that election. If you go also uh, to the governorship election that happened last year uh, in Edo and Ondo, Ondo State, participation was in the region of 35%. And so you keep wondering, the cost of our election keeps going high, astro astronomically high, but participation continues to dwindle. We are just back from Anambra where we engage stakeholders on the need to increase citizen participation in this election especially because of what we have observed from the last two governorship elections in the state. In 2013, for instance, voter participation in the election in Anambra was just uh, uh, in the region of 24%. In 2017, when we thought uh, that could have been a change in that, uh, sadly, it went bad, bad to about just 21%, uh, only about 400 registered voters participated in that election. So um, the worry always is about the quality of participation, especially in local, in state-based or local elections. For Anambra, for instance, in the 2015 general election that happened just after the state election, that, to a year or so after the state election that happened in 2017, uh, in 2013, over a million voters participated in the, in the national election. But when it comes to the election that is closest to the people, the participation keeps dropping. So we are worried that uh, we cannot continue to allow a few determine the fate of uh, the state, determine who becomes the governor of the state. We saw that in 2017 in Anambra State. People are complaining about the quality of governance and all of that. But, I mean, they lost the moral right to complain when they did not effectively engage the process. Exactly. So, you, you, you just literally took the questions out of my mouth because I was going to say that we're very good at complaining. We're very, I mean, I, I, I have no grudges against people who rant on social media. But we would love to see that rant translate to some action. But we barely see those people show up at the polls. Now, majority of the people from my research who show up at the polls are those people who take a thousand naira or, or less from politicians. The people who show up for town hall meetings, not necessarily those of us, the elitists, who are on social media ranting. So what do we do? For Yaga Africa, you're, you're, you observe elections, but is there some form of... Um, 
information that can be put out to educate people um, to come out and not just stay on social media to complain about it? What is happening to bring people out of their shells? Because we can't continue like this in 2023. It's the need for an all-round engagement. Now, there has always been the traditional voters in Nigeria that we know that for every election, consistently they have participated in the election. But even for those kind of uh, those categories of voters that we have, sadly, because of the things that are happening in the body politic, they are beginning to lose interest in the quality of uh, in, in in participating in the process. We have seen, I mean, uh, we have seen politicians now weaponize poverty. It comes to election, they give party sums to people, and on that basis, people go out to, 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 to vote for them, which is morally wrong, which is very wrong. And then also, um, we have seen also cases where in the build-up to the election, politicians will heat up the polity to the extent that you begin to wonder whether election will happen or not. We saw that happen in Edo last year, before the election, 12 of the 18 local governments in Edo were riddled with all sort of pre-election related violence. In Ondo as well, Ondo has 18 local government. 13 of the 18 local government had all suffered, they had reported cases of election related violence. In fact, in one of the local governments in Ondo, a woman was stripped naked. So for those kind of voters that are experiencing such in the build up to the election, that will already put fear in their mind and then uh, would also affect or impact the way they engage the process come election day. The security that are charged with the responsibility of providing lives and properties, sometimes they wait until very late in the game before they begin to come out to, to, to assuade or provide that confidence to voters. So you hear them coming out to do what they call, quote and unquote, uh, uh, show of force the week of the election. If, for instance, based on the incident that had happened two or three weeks to the election, a voter decided to uh, make up their mind that they are not going to engage, nothing a security man will do in the week of the election will build that confidence for the voter to participate. So for me, it's about the need for early engagement of the process. Election is a process. It's not an activity or it's not an event that will just happen on November the 6th, for instance, in Anambra State. We saw how also the narrative of 2017, you had uh, uh, some people saying things like uh, no referendum, no election, for instance. People uh, buy into those sort of narrative, put uh, fear in the minds of people, discourage people from participating, and the election day will come. You see uh, the turnout will be low. And it is in location that you don't have enough voter turnout. That is where you see politicians go to manipulate manipulate the votes. And that narrative is already to, uh, already building up in Anambra because we saw that also happening in this uh, voter registration in Anambra State. On this uh, on July the 26th, when uh, INEC officially started the process, part of Anambra uh, South, for instance, that was blocked. INEC were, uh, were denied access to their registration centers by some secessionists that were trying to enforce the sit at home order. Now, um, I, I never had a, a shorter time for, to engage the voter registration. It will end on September the 5th. Every Monday now you have, I was in Anagra on Monday, for instance, that was a total shutdown on Monday. Technically, for people that only have Monday as opportunity to go and register to vote, they have been technically disenfranchised, disconnected from engaging the, the electoral process. So, for all But INEC has a portal to, open for people to, you know, re register online. It or... is not enough. That is just a first step. That doesn't do anything. Beyond that, people have to go and do the physical capture at the INEC offices. That has not been happening much, and that is what we are saying. Anambra people have barely, barely a week to conclude this process. It is ending on the 5th, and we want to see that the numbers go up, especially in Anambra State. We want to see how that moves from the protest that we see online, just like you said, to physical engagement of the process. So, like, for instance, an opportunity was lost on Monday. How do we make up for that opportunity? That, that should be the kind of conversation we should be having now. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm not a naysayer, but um, I'm a bit sick of hearing that, oh, this politician said this or this group of people did this and that's why people are not coming out to vote. We have gone through this cycle for years. Haven't we learned anything as, as the, the voters, as the electorate? Haven't we learned that this is a, a tactic uh, that these politicians use just to confuse us, 
and, and at the end of the day, they get to benefit from it. I mean, like well, I said, yeah, we're not talking about the average person in a village in Anambra. We're talking about mm -hmm. the people in the, in the, in, in the uh, urban areas. We're talking about the guys who are in the city, the people who should know better, hardly even show up to vote. So really, if those people are, are having, uh, experiencing such apathy, uh, what should the woman in the village do? Well, I, I just hope that narrative doesn't also go to the poor woman in the village, like you said, because they are the original voters in Nigeria. For most of us that stay on social media, we don't go out to vote. Like the Lagos narrative, I was there, like I said, in Lagos. On election day, it was sad to see young people, young people that are engaged on social media, you see them on the street playing football. It is sad to also hear that that day for some people were the day they thought they should make up for the time for the lost sleep that they had had. And I mean, uh, the education needs to start now. We bad leaders will continue to be elected by good people that will refuse to go out to vote. We should know this: elections are getting better. Elections are only the peaceful means that we can bring the change that we desire to see. If elections are not getting better, politicians will not be buying PVCs. If elections are not getting better, you will not be hearing about instances of, of, of ballot box snatching or ballot box stuffing. It is because uh, things are improving, especially in the electoral space. That is why politicians are bringing up every kind of gimmicks that they can find in their own in their own reading books to ensure that these people stay off the polling units. These people don't go out to, to engage the process. So the change that they anticipate to see, the change can only happen when they make that conscious decision of engaging the process. And the time to start is now and not on election day. Most times we hear the argument is that, oh, uh, we don't like the option that the politicians are bringing up for us. Uh, I mean, what happens on election day is just that day. They should be more concerned about what happened before the election, especially with the quality of engagement in the, of political parties, the political party primaries, the candidate nomination processes in political parties. We don't wait until election day to be saying, oh, the options we have now are between the devil and the deep blues, and I don't want to be immersed in those kind of dirty politics. If young people want to see the change, they should engage, they should join political parties, they should join movement and bring up the kind of candidates that they want to see in the election and go out also to vote for those candidates. All right. Well, I hope that we learn uh, uh, sometime soon because, I mean, the clock is ticking and if we want to change, then we have to be that change. Uh, Paul James is the Programs Manager Elections for Yaga Africa and he's speaking uh, to us on the issue of the Anambra election. So uh, thank you very much. We know that you're going to be monitoring that election. Hopefully we will yeah, be able yeah, to yeah. speak with you when the time comes. Yeah, we are fine. We are on our ground, on ground from now until the election. So yeah, it will be a pleasure to always stick to you about the election. We are observing the pre-election process. So every week we are going to put out a, a report on what we are seeing in the build up to the election. All right. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Paul James, uh, for speaking with us. Thank you. All right. Thank you for all, all of you for staying with us. We'll take a quick break. And when we come back, I will give you my take. Well, here's my take. I'm almost tired of saying the same thing over and over again, but I will not relent. You cannot ask for good governance if you are not a good follower. What does it take to be a good follower? If you need to vote in elections, if you want to have free, fair and credible elections, if you want your vote to count, first things first, do you have a voter card? If you do not have it, have you taken advantage of the processes that have been put in place for you to get one? It's not enough for us to rant. Ranting is good. It's not enough for us to protest. Protests are good. But have we been allowed to protest um, you know, recently? No, it's become a crime under this government because even the mandate that you have as a person, as a citizen in this country, the office of the citizen, uh, has been gagged one way or the other. Every time the average Nigerian is sick and tired of government playing to the gallery and decide to hit the streets, government shows us force, brings out the army, brings out the police. Now we want to see government show us that force in dealing with the insecurity that we're facing. Where is it? Every day, people are being kidnapped. People are being killed. A whole NDA was taken over by bandits. 
it is a shame, it is an embarrassment, not just on the people of Nigeria, but also on the people that call themselves our leaders. We are heading for a dangerous place. And if our president, if our governors, our senators, our House of Rep members do not sit up and face this issue, we might be doomed, unfortunately. But let us not lose hope. If you do not have a voter's card, please go and get it. Stop complaining and start acting. I am Mary Anacom, thanking you for watching.